Hi, my name is Sandra Pearl, and I've been teaching for 40 years at the City University of New York. I began in about 1971 as a graduate student at about the same time that composition studies was coming into its own. And I'm now, just nearing retirement, um, directing a PhD program in composition and rhetoric at the CUNY Graduate Center. I think probably one of the largest changes that has affected our field is the, the infusion and the development of technology. I think it's affected my undergraduate teaching, my graduate teaching, and my own work, so I'd like to say a little bit about that. Um, okay, I'm going to take a minute. Uh, okay. Whether we're talking about computers, word processing, the internet, digital tools, online course sites, discussion boards, blogs, or wikis, I think all of these have had an amazing impact on how we think about composing and what composing is. So if you think back 40 years ago, it, you know, we used pen and paper, and I'd say it was both very simple and very elegant. Um, but something else has happened in the 21st century with the explosion of digital tools. So I would, and I would like to give two examples. The first is with my undergraduate students. And for me as a writing teacher, the actual words on the page always come first. I want my students to be critical thinkers and elegant writers and thoughtful writers and aesthetically pleasing writers. I want them to think about the features of writing that always matter to me. But once they have a draft and they've revised it and they've worked on it, I, I really do ask them to think about the final product in terms of multimedia and multi-genre pieces. So for many of my freshmen, um, their final papers are often digital. They're the kind of work that I want them to either put on YouTube or other places on webs and websites. And what happens then is the composing is no longer only the words. It is, it is added to, it is supplemented by visuals, by voiceovers, by images, by music. And I think what this does, first of all, it changes how they think about audience and how they, their audience is now very far removed from them. It's not just their classmates or their families or their professors. It could be anyone who chooses to tune in. Um, but also, I think it prepares them for the workforce in the 21st century. I think using, learning how to use new media, becoming comfortable with it, and knowing how to make the decisions that writers have to make is a wonderful skill, and I think it will serve them well. So from the time my students are freshmen, I really do ask them to work in digital modes. The other piece I will describe right now is the work I'm doing currently with my doctoral students, which we will be presenting at the conference tomorrow. And about a year ago, we began designing something called the Writing Studies Tree, where we're looking to track and implement a genealogy of our field, so that everyone in the field will be represented, and we will be able to show ancestors, descendants, and siblings on our tree. And without the advent of technology, I do not think we could have done this in any way as thoughtfully and as carefully, um, because there is software and there are platforms available that allow us to input data and then look at the relationships of our field. And since we would say that probably the people who created our field, primarily in the 20th century and the latter half, and starting in the 40s, um, are primarily gone, and I think of myself as part of the second generation of composition scholars, and as I said, we're nearing retirement. Um, so it's just the time is ripe to capture the, the histories of the people we worked who preceded us, and then to pass this on to our students. And so it's been a great project that we're very excited about mapping our field, and certainly nothing that we think we would ever do alone. Again, the, the possibilities that, that um, technology offers is that we can begin this and it's open access. Anyone in the field is, in, is welcome and we encourage people to come and add their dissertation chairs, their co-authors, their collaborators, and I want to stress that our field is highly collaborative, that we value working with each other. And so we had to find a software platform that allowed us to show not just hierarchical relationships, but also horizontal, the way that we work as peers so often and as mentors of each other. So that has been just very exciting for us, and we're excited to present it. And the last piece I'd say then is that probably what this, the challenge this kind of work poses to us as a field is to be mindful of access. The people, students, universities, colleges who do not have a rich environment of media and digital tools will 
be doing a disservice to their students. Their students will be left behind. And to level the playing field, I'm not sure what our organization can do um, or what the universities as a whole need to do, but I think ensuring that all students, whether they're K-12 or university, have access to the latest technology is absolutely crucial if we're to have an equitable and fair educational system and economic and social workplace. So, thank you. <laughs>